uh, at your service in terms of what people want to hear about. Uh, I, I do have one. I do have one request I'd like to respond to. Um, uh, which is uh, somebody was asking about computing uh, composition series for Verma modules. And I think that's a nice example, and it involves complex groups. And so that's one example I'd like to do. But um, are there any other requests? I mean, I could also, I was also thinking I could do some more examples of parameters and understanding what they mean. Yes. Yes. You just want to pick out certain bits of some parent and have it printed out. Uh -huh. um, I'd like to see it. How to do that? Just so, just a, a simple programming question. Yeah. Sure. Let's start with that. That's easy enough. Um, principle. It's easy enough. Uh, so, let's say about a block, and I just want to pick out certain things. Right. Okay. Let's look at that. So um, I'm, I'm going to execute uh, Atlas now, and I'm going, in, I'm going to do it in a way that, that Mark disparages. But uh, I want to explain why I'm doing that, which is that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Atlas scripts directory, and I get the command dot dot slash Atlas. And the reason I do that is because I have multiple copies of Atlas sitting all over the place. And this way, I'm sure I'm running the one that I think I'm running. Maybe Mark doesn't accept that as a good answer, but anyway, that's... Yeah, but then I have to look at the script. Anyway, um, okay, so let's do an example. Um, let's say set G is equal to uh, uh, SP or uh, 6R. And let's say, let's set D be all the script all discrete series of G with infinitesimal character rho. So DS is a list of parameters. And it's eight parameters long. And if you only want the first, well, if you want to just see them, you say for P and DS do print S P. Oops. That prints all eight of them. Um, if you want to access them by number, you can say for i colon uh, sharp ds do print this uh, um, ds bracket i. And by, by the way, Paul, you, um, uh, you weren't here. Uh, we're saving all of these sessions. And this will be available, so you don't have to worry it's too much about uh, taking notes. And Okay, so now that I'm doing it by number, um, I, I, can, I, I can do it like this. I could say if I two comma, uh, sorry, I from I up to four. So that prints the first four. And the syntax is um, if you do I colon four from somewhere, the, as Mark was explaining the other day, it's going to start at two and print a total of four terms. Actually, let me um, let me do something here to help illustrate this. Uh, okay, so so the command I ran was. Um, for i up to 4, starting at 2, do something. And and so, and then I, oh, I had to print i, and then list the, the i element of the list. And so i is starting at 2, and there are four terms. And, uh, and there we go. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I have a couple of small questions. Um, uh, it's very minor, but I never use print. I always use print s, and uh, I'll show you the difference. <clears throat> yeah, 
you know, print, print has all this, these extra quotes and things. So, well, not quotes, but um, this is a triple. It's, a, it's an integer, a string, and a parameter. And here it's printing it literally as integer, comma, string, comma, parameter. But print S stands for print string. And it, it's converting I into a string and atta attaching this string to it and then attaching that string to it so it looks nicer. So I almost always use print S. Uh, sorry, what? I did? Oh, print. Mm -hmm. um, I almost can't print. I, I mean, it's gotten so bad that when I'm in, in Perl, I'm always typing print S and getting an error. I always type print S. <laughs> okay. Um, and now, another useful um, thing is. Uh, um, Oh. So print is very handy for debugging. Because suppose you call the function and you're not sure which value it comes to. Then you could ah. you could just say instead of f x, you say f x dot print when it exists. So then it will apply print to x, but it will still find the value of ah. the function. Yes. But here this illustrates the difference. If you print this it, just, it returns that triple, I mean, it prints that triple and actually returns the triple as a value. If you do print this, it prints it nicely and returns void. Just for, for illustration, type the same thing as command with the square brackets inside the lambda. And you see that it only, only works with the lambda. As soon as something gets buried into right. the value, it just prints that. Um, and another useful thing is this. Um, so uh, th this syntax means um, annoying. Is this right? Yeah. And this means um, it's going to run over this list, and the at i is going to keep track of the index that you're at. And uh, so it does the same thing, but it's often useful to, anyway, it's, just, it's another useful syntax. P at I, P at I it's, means... It's, it's a kind of a mix between a counted loop and a loop over the components of the list. Right. So it looks over the components of the loop, but at the same time, it, it assigns to I the index where you are. So that's, that comes in handy. So I you see, in print, command, you use P for the value, but also I for the index. Okay, so I thought it'd be worth looking at the discrete series of E8. So first of all, how many discrete series does E8 have? curious about whether 
That was really, uh, I'll, okay, I'll go back to that in a second, but I wanted to look at this example. So I was talking yesterday about how um, you can identify uh, the street series by the types of roots, whether they're compact or non-compact. And in E8, there are eight simple roots. And they're all, in, for the discrete series, they're all imaginary. And they're either um, I, um, C, meaning compact, or I1 or I2, meaning non-compact. And th there's a distinction between I1 and I2 that's type 1 and type 2, but for what I'm talking about now, I don't care. And uh, the thing I wanted to illustrate is that uh, in this list of discrete series, the very first one, all of the simple roots are non-compact. So that's the large discrete series. And then if you look at the others, there's always at least two compact roots, except for the very last, ah, I'm sorry, there's always at least two non-compact roots, except for the very last one, all of the, uh, all of the simple roots are compact except for one. And this is illustrating the, um, what's known as the borel de Siebenthal chamber. And um, there are 135 discrete series on this list, and they're distinguished by the pattern of uh, compact and non-compact roots. There are 256 possible such patterns, and 135 of them occur here. So where are the others? Or maybe they don't even exist. Yes? Probably the information of the seeds is yesterday. Yes. Yes. So, so the um, the way to think of it is as follows. Uh, in any event, 
the way you recognize the discrete series is all of the roots are imaginary, meaning they all all the simple roots start with i. And so in this case, there are eight of them, numbered parameters number zero through seven. And yeah, go ahead. How do you attach what? Yeah. So let me let me explain. So um, so the the um, uh, we're we're an infinitesimal character rho, and rho for this group is three, two, one. Okay. And in in uh, in human terms, um, the k is equal to u three, and the simple roots of k. <coughs> are E1 minus E2 and E2 minus E3. Okay? And um, if you give me a conjugate of rho, for example, this version of rho, um, if rho is equal to 3, 2, 1, uh, the simple roots are E1 minus E2, E2 minus E3, and 2 e3. Okay? That's just the usual simple roots in type c3. And the, the rule is that these are the compact roots, and all other roots are non compact. So attached to this triple is compact, compact, non compact. So that that uh, um, that says that maybe you could write uh, I C I C ah yeah that's probably better um, I C I C I one okay so 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 in, in the in the if you choose the usual coordinates for S P there's there's a um, um, pi well, let me say um, the define pi lambda to be the discrete series with Harishandra parameter lambda. And this has infinitesimal character lambda. And it's, it's a fact that pi of lambda is isomorphic to pi of lambda prime, if and only if lambda prime is equal to w lambda for W in the vowel group of K. <clears throat> so I'm telling you, so in particular, there's there's a representation pi of rho. That's a that's a well-defined discrete series representation of SP6. Which one in the list is it? Well, the way you check is uh, you um, you do this calculation, you see that it has two compact roots and one uh, non-compact root. So which one is it? It looks like it must be seven or five. Wow. Why? Because the, the, I'm looking for this pattern I C I C I one, and that occurs here and it occurs there. So, so when, if you, if you want to make a bijection, so let me write it down. <coughs> So, so, so here's a human. Uh, here's the way a human thinks about the discrete series of SP6. Um, it's the set of pi of lambda such that lambda is k dominant and, and conjugate to rho. Conjugate to rho. Um, this is this is the, the discrete series at rho. So that is to say, so lambda actually list those eight things. It, it'll give people a chance to be digesting the things that you said. Sorry, do what? You list these eight lambda. Yeah, that's what I was about to do. Stop interrupting me. I'm sorry. Three, two, um, one. You're not going to come in and stop apologizing. Uh, David, I've never heard you apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, what are all of the lambdas? So uh, dominant, the ABC is dominant, G dominant, 
if A is greater than or equal to B is greater than or equal to C is greater than or equal to zero, and it's K dominant, if A is greater than or equal to B is greater than or equal to C. Okay? Because the only the, the compact groups are just E1 minus E2 and E2 minus E3. So what's the what's the um, quotient? Uh, the, 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 what, what are all the, the conjugates of 3, 2, 1? Well, um, uh, you can take any signs. Um, the, the, you can take plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1, and any permutation of those, those are all conjugate to rho, but there's a unique way to put them in decreasing order, and there are eight of them. So here they are, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, minus 1, uh, 3, 1, minus 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, uh, 2, 1, minus, uh, sorry, yeah, 2, 1, minus 3, 2, minus 1, minus 3, and 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So, when I learned about the discrete series of SP4, that's the way I thought of it. <coughs> Okay. Now, what what makes the discrete series different? Why is this is this discrete series really different from this one? Uh, SP six. Did I say SP four? Why didn't you correct me? You told me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, SP six. And um, uh, yeah, so. Are these discrete series all sort of the same or different, or what's the story? Well, uh, it, it turns out that the, 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 the type of discrete series is controlled by this compact and non-compact group business. So this one, um, both, uh, this is IC, IC, I1. And here, um, so, So how do I label this one? Well, this is rho, but in some other chamber. So you have to write down the simple roots in this chamber. And the simple roots are the ones which, when you dot with this, you get 1. So the simple roots in this chamber are, I'll write them here, E1 minus E2, E2 plus E3, and minus 2 E3. And this one's compact. This one's non-compact. Is this a two? One. They're all ones. This is a one, and this is a one. Okay. Let's, let's do another one. The simple roots in this chamber are E1 plus E3 minus E3 minus E2 and 2E2 which are non-compact, non-compact, non-compact. How, how do you find non-compact? Because the, the only compact ones are E1 minus E2 and E2 minus E3. So this is, <laughs> this is exactly the non-atlas way of thinking of things. In atlas, we, you know, the symbol roots are fixed. But I'm, I'm precisely not doing that here. This is, this is in the old-fashioned language, the way you would figure out these discrete series. Okay, you're in a chamber. That defines a set of positive roots. That set of positive roots is varying as you vary the chambers. And the compact roots, we fixed K. K is not varying. It's the chamber that's varying. Okay. So let's. I don't know out here. So I don't want to do all. Let's do one more. This one is what e1 plus e3 minus e3 plus e2 minus 2e2 non-compact compact non-compact non so on. Okay. And uh, let's do the last one. Um, 3, 1, minus 2. Uh, 
two one minus three. Well, let's do this one. Doesn't help. Well, the last one's good. Okay. Yeah, the last one, fine. So the last one is uh, minus e three plus e two minus e two plus e one minus two e one, which is compact, compact. Uh, non okay? So there are eight discrete series, and how many patterns do we get? Well, each root can be compact or non-compact, so you might think that you get two, to the, two cubed is eight, you get every pattern exactly once. But that's not the case, because you the, the pattern that doesn't show up is is that the only place you can get all the roots compact is in the compact and if the group is compact that's what you get but since this group is non-compact you never get that pattern <coughs> um, well I guess that's just one pattern you don't get so in fact there are um, in, in fact each pattern occurs twice so here's I C I 1 I 1 and uh, oh no, sorry. Here's ICICI1, and here's ICICI1. And uh, definition, pi is holomorphic, or anti-holomorphic, if all simple Roots are uh, compact except for one. Uh, the, the, no. That won't do for definition. Uh, I mean, it's true for yeah. SP, but um, I don't know whether Joe is awake enough to explain properly why that's not the right definition. Oh, because I'm sorry. You're 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 right. Um, that's not sufficient. <coughs> if the group is quasi-split, maybe I'm not sure. Let's. Uh, well, there's E8. E8. Well, E8, for example. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so sorry. Um, um, yeah. So um, the 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 correct definition. Is, is that um, uh, holomorphic means that all the simple that the number of compact simple roots is the rank of k? Semi-simple rank, right? Semi-simple rank. And and this implies that uh, well, for compact group, are those holomorphic? Uh, I think it's not an unreasonable. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. So that's the holomorphic discrete series. So there are two holomorphic discrete series, and um, definition pi is large. Um, if all simple roots are non-compact. Do you mean if you expand it, if you miss an alpha? Huh? Do you mean if you like it, if you miss an alpha of pi? Yes. Well, when you say infinitesimal character, that's too weak. All of these things have the same infinitesimal character. When, what you have to say is the, the Harishandra parameter. Here? Yeah, so so pi pi of lambda, which is a discrete series representation, um, if if the number of compact simple roots in the chamber defined by lambda. Okay? 
And so it turns out that in SP, uh, they, these come in pairs. They're too large, they're too homomorphic, and, um, and there's an outer automorphism which flips them. So it's just like SL2. You can't, there's no canonical way to call one homomorphic and one anti homomorphic. There's a choice there. But um, anyway. And uh, so, so, all right. So, well, let me pause there. Questions? All right. That's correct. Yeah. Well, so, well, no. I mean, I, I was I was explaining the the math, so now I can say how to line up with the how to how to relate this to what Atlas says. Which would 